Unfortunately, ordinary people felt comfortable with the old numbers. After all, they'd lived with them part of a thousand years. The old Roman numerals weren't going to make it easy for the Indian newcomers. And it wasn't just a question of tradition. Your average punter had some pretty good reasons to prefer the old system. For example, many medieval Italian cities had their own currency. So every time I found myself at a new town or a new set with extras in costumes, in the case maybe, I have to go to the money changer's bench or banker, as it's called. A banker was a counting table, basically an abacus with counters instead of beads. The men who operated them, the bankers, had to swear an oath not to cheat their customers. My dear, if the uh, magistrates find he is cheating me, they'll come and break his bench. And his banker will be rupta, which is the word for broken. And he'll be declared banker rupta, which is where we get the word bankrupt from. Hi. Now, these things. How much can I get those in whatever place this is? Uh, he's counting it now. It's uh, reassuring to see he's using numerals I'm familiar with, uh, which are Roman numerals, of course. And he's using this abacus, so at least I can see what he's doing. And I get that much. Oh, right, fine. Well, thanks a lot. Nice doing business with you. <laughs> but what if I was to go over to one of the smart chaps using the newfangled Indian numerals? Hi. Now, uh, how much would you give me for that? Now, you see, this is the problem. You see, as a medieval punter, I've got no idea what he's writing. I mean, no wonder people were suspicious. I mean, if my bank started keeping my accounts in Chinese, I'd be suspicious. Well, thanks. I've got no idea how you arrived at that. But thanks anyway. This distrust went right to the top. In 1299, the city of Florence actually banned merchants from using the new numbers in accounts. They had to use Roman numerals. But no number was treated with more suspicion than one's partner, Zero. One writer called Zero a sign which creates confusion and difficulties. <laughs> Zero was called Cifra, and it was regarded with such suspicion that that word became our word for secret code, a cipher. But the days of the old system were numbered. I suppose you could blame good old human greed. The traditionalists who clung to the abacus and Roman numerals had never had to calculate interests on loans because the Catholic Church said charging interests on loans was a sin. It was called usury. But come the Reformation, the Protestant churches were more business friendly and the long-held Christian objections to capitalism seemed to, well, disappear. So, in this new money-lending, interest-charging environment, which would prove the more useful? Indian numbers or the abacus? Well, let's find out. On my right, one first-class mathematician. On my left, one first-class abacist. So, supposing I lend someone £10 at half a percent interest a month, how much do they owe me at the end of the year. Okay? Ready? Steady? Go! Kimmy's been an abbasist since she was just 15 and is using a modern Soroban model. But just as they did in the 16th century, she's rounding her numbers to the nearest penny as she goes. Let's hope she can round herself up into first place. Marcus is using a pen and paper, so he's working to an eye-popping 12 decimal places. He lives in North London with his lovely wife Shani and three charming children. He's not big, but he is clever. Ah, the Kimmy has got an answer. Kimmy, yes. what, what's your answer? £10.60. £10.60. So, compound interest after a year would be £10.60, and the abacus seems to have got there before the mathematician. Well, I don't want to put a damper on things, but I think that answer is actually wrong. Um, I've got uh, an answer of 
ten pounds and sixty one point six seven 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 six six four zero three five pence to be no. precise. I've actually picked up the subtlety of compound interest, which is it's a little bit each month, but it adds up, so I've got this extra one point six seven P. For the medieval businessman, it would mean the difference between making a living and not. Maybe that's why the abacus user looks so miserable. As capitalism gained respectability, calculating interest and compound interest became de rigueur for any self-respecting businessman. And for doing that, even with an abacus, the old Roman system was simply no match for the Indian numerals. <coughs> so, centuries after Fibonacci had brought them to Europe, the Indian numbers finally outmaneuvered the lumbering old Romans. <coughs> <laughs> they were quick and versatile, and with one and zero in the lead, just better at teamwork. <laughs> when the end came, it was a pushover. The old Roman numerals were at last bankrupt. But one and zero had even bigger plans for the future.